Good morning, Horner Nation. Welcome to The Daily Buzz. I'm Joe Hutzler. Today is Monday, November 12th, 2018. I still got the playoff beard. Let's find out why that is. Women's soccer in action this weekend, the first and second round of the NCAA tournament, and it was a successful one. First, we go back to Saturday's action, taking on the Lions of Piedmont College, and down 1-0 early in the first 90 seconds. The Lions put a goal on the board, but Lynchburg resilient in their comeback effort. Caitlin Mertens with a nice one-timer up top for her 27th goal of the season. It's her second in the NCAA. Then, a little over a minute later, we were talking about Alyssa Rudy on the broadcast, and it was good mojo for her. She flies in off this corner, just crosses the goal line, picks up her second goal of the season, and that proved to be the game winner in the end, Lynchburg rolling into the second round on Sunday, where they would face a familiar foe, the Emory Eagles, a team they had already played earlier this season, a 1-0 game that time around, and this one looked that, that way. Midway through the first half, it's Rudy again, her second goal in as many days. One more look at it, just speeding away from the backline defender, no chance for the keeper, 1-0 at halftime. And Delia Sapio had a lot of work to do in the second half compared to the first six saves on the day, all of them in half number two and keeping the Eagles off the board with Emily Sanchez potting her second goal of the season and finishing this one with a big exclamation point for Lynchburg as they advance to the Sweet 16 for the second straight year. They will play Messiah next week. Happy days for Sanchez and Rudy. All right, we also had some action inside as we go back to Saturday in the gym. Season opener for Lynchburg women's basketball, third ranked in the ODAC preseason poll and a big crowd on hand for this one against North Carolina Wesleyan and it was over early. Terrific effort by Lynchburg on the offensive boards. Alex Allen putting in two of her 21. She would hit that go at that, that uh, three Play, three point play, excuse me, with the free throw as well. It wasn't just Allen and Shepard, it was also the freshman Aaron Green getting some points there. Carolyn Noe, welcome back, hitting four of six from beyond the arc to get herself off to a great start. Check out this hustle play from Molly Shepard. Aggravated that she couldn't pull it in, but she'll be rewarded for that effort later on, popping this one in from the wing for three more. That put Lynchburg up 32 to 15. They scored 50 in the first half, and Noe a big part of that in the first 20 minutes. Moving on now to the second half, still a sizable advantage, 42 to 18. Noe again, Splash City for 33. She wears the right numbers on that jersey, that's for sure. Here's Emily Elliott on one of her six assists of the day, and Lynchburg rolls in game number one, 80 to 52, handing the Bishops their first loss in, of course, their first game. Now it's on to men's basketball, taking on the Seahawks of St. Mary's. Sting in attendance, giving us the national anthem. And early on, Lynchburg getting a bucket in transition. It's Jesse Case to the rack. He would have more later on. A great game for him. And a great game overall for the Hornets until about midway through the second half. More on that in a moment as Austin Wright and the beneficiary of this assist from Devontae Young for a long two ball. Two straight days, excuse me, two straight games for Wrighton with double digit points. Coach Scott fired up. Gotta love the passion on the bench from Coach Scott as Chance Green starts this run out. It's Devontae Young to Jamil Pasha in the corner and Pasha off the bench and on the board with three. Some fun at halftime being had by Erica McLeod and Coach Aldridge's daughter stepping in there to show off her excitement as Austin Wrighton LeBron-esque down the floor, swatting that one away, keeping the Seahawks off the board, who, who would make a run in this one late in the second half. Jesse Case knocks down the three ball here, but in the end, it was Seahawks with a chance to take this one over. A one-point game, Milstead on the drive, misses the shot, and Lynchburg gets the rebound. Two free throws by Austin Wright, and Lynchburg survives. 83-80, to the final score, 2-0 on the season for the boys of the hardwood. Now some other game results earlier in the weekend. The equestrian team finished seventh overall. Paige Gout, Taylor Herzog, and Danny Herzberg with some ribbons to go home with them. Also, a big day for Lynchburg cross country. Three now, 
Runners will be going to nationals. Caitlin Johnson on the women's side with her third place finish at the South Southeast Regional Meet. And then on the men's side, it's Tristan Lucy Speedle who also qualified, as well as Max Sparks. We just heard about this yesterday. So three Hornets will be going to nationals after their terrific runs in the regional meet there in Barry College in Georgia. And disappointing, but a great season for Lynchburg field hockey. They drop one to Rowan for the second time this year. This time much closer, a 1-0 final. Nine saves for Laurel Nix. And as you can see there, it's the furthest that the team has gone since 2012. A great showing by Lynchburg field hockey this year, especially those three seniors. All right, let's look ahead to some games to put on your schedule this week. And just one, women's basketball taking on Averett tomorrow at 7 p.m. Our coverage on LHSN begins at 645 for this non-conference tilt. All right, on to campus events now. We've got four to bring to you to start your week. And we begin with the Veterans Day Chapel service this morning from 10 to 11. Of course, yesterday was Veterans Day, but you'll be able to hear from a retired service member in the Snido Chapel uh, this morning at 10 a.m. Also, study abroad folks who are interested in doing that in Mexico. You can check out the meeting today at 3 o'clock in Hopwood, room 15. Chamber Ensemble Concert is tonight from 7.30 to 9 p.m. They, they present the music to you from the Snido Chapel. So two events today in the chapel. And our last event to tell you about, Solidarity Sleepers. Tonight at 9 p.m. through tomorrow at 7 p.m. You can sleep on the Dell to raise awareness for Hunger and Homelessness Week, which begins today. And that's all the time we have for today. A jam-packed show for a jam-packed weekend and more to come. You can stay tuned all the time by downloading the One Nation app for iOS and Android devices. And until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. when Erica McLeod will be standing where I am, I'm Joe Hutzler reminding you it's a great day to be a Hornets and we are One Nation.